Chris Godinas, licensed professional counselor, also the host of We Need to Talk on every Sunday at noon, and then I do these questions on Wednesdays, and I post both of them up to Facebook. This video is for educational and informational purposes only. The views and opinions stated herein are mine and mine alone. They do not represent the ACA, the APA, or any other therapist for that matter. Boom, shakalaka done. I would like to thank my sponsor, BetterHelp, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P, BetterHelp.com slash Chris Godinas. They're an online therapy company. They are international, all over the world. So if you need to get into an online therapist, go to betterhelp.com slash Chris Godinas. Answer a few questions. They will set you up with a licensed professional therapist, master's level or PhD level here in the U.S. of A. If you're here in the U.S. of A., Again, go to betterhelp.com slash Chris Godinas. They will find a licensed professional therapist in your state. So thank you, betterhelp.com slash Chris Godinas. And the beautiful thing is they have really reasonable packages. That's, that's what I love about it. It's affordable and it's good. So thank you, betterhelp.com slash Chris Godinas. Okay, let's dive into the questions, shall we? Okay, why do I feel guilty when I try to do things after the relationship and I find it hard about doing them without thinking about the abuser. Okay, so what the abuser does is they take over our personality, they take over the things we love, they uh, infiltrate our hobbies, they, you know, and they, they insinuate themselves into everything that we do. So we are going through complicated grief when we leave an abusive relationship. And so when we leave and we go do the things that we either used to do with them, or that they were a part of somehow, of course, they're going to be the first thing on your mind. And that's intentional. They don't ever, they want to take up permanent residence up here. That the worst thing you can do to an abuser is to absolutely never think of them again. So that's what you want to work on. So when they pop up in your head, you're going to do something called thought stopping. This is a CBT technique. Thought stopping. So the thought pops up and rather than resisting it going, oh my gosh, thought I don't want to have, ah, I don't want, I'm not thinking about the thought. I'm not giving me, I'm not thinking about the thought. I'm not thinking about what am I thinking about the whole time? That thought. So instead of doing that, you're going to go, oh, I see you mother clucker. I see, mm -hmm, I see you. I know what you're about. Mm -hmm. You don't get to ruin this for me. You do not, you do not get to come in. You do not get to do this fun thing I'm about to go do. I hear you, I see you, and you, sir or madam, can go pound sand. Bye 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 now, bye bye right when you get work, bye bye And you're gonna have to do that. And it's not gonna be a one and done. And this is something you may want to write and burn a letter about too. You're probably gonna wanna write a letter basically evicting them. You know, dear abuser, I am evicting you. You do not get to live in my head rent-free. You do not get to come with me to whatever fun thing it is that you used to do together or something that you used to enjoy. So, nope, you don't, yeah, you're going to pop up. And you know what? I'm going to send you right back out. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. So that's what you're going to have to do. It's common. And, and remember, this is complicated grief. Complicated grief goes for about three to five years. So the first year is really difficult. Second year gets a little easier. Third year, a little easier. You generally, by the fourth or the fifth year, that person rarely pops up in your head, which is good. And if they're still popping up in your head a lot and you're doing the thought stopping, then it's time to go see a therapist to figure out why. What's keeping you stuck? Why are you allowing this to continually haunt you in a way? So there is that. I hope that answered that question. Let me make sure. Yep, yep, yep. I got that one. It's good. Okay, what? Okay. Yep. Okay, there we go. All right, so let's go to the other questions. Okay, I just want my story heard. I can't afford a lawyer, and my friends are telling me to stop saying so much in court. I don't understand the court system help. Okay, the court system is an alien planet as far as I am concerned. The average Joe is not going to understand it. It is. It has got a whole bunch of customs and procedural things and ways that things are done that don't make sense to the average Joe. And you have to remember, 
a lot of the attorneys and a lot of the lawyers are malignant narcissists themselves. Because remember, malignant narcissists are attracted to positions of power. The, the family court system here in the US of A is so verklempt, it is so messed up, it is so foobard, I can't even begin to tell you. It needs to be re completely reorged. It really does. Because they don't, they don't have training in psychological things. They don't understand domestic violence, really. I mean, some of the judges, if you ask them about it, they're like, they don't get it. They, and <laughs> a lot of them are abusers themselves. So um, I know you want your story heard. I do. Get a therapist for that. Find a support group for that. The court system is not, listen to me now, believe me later, not the place to tell your story. It's not. I know you want to be heard. I know you want people to get it. What the court system is looking for is facts and figures. No emotion. Facts, figures, no emotion. None. Zip, zero, zilch, nada. And here's the reason why. Every single judge here in Maricopa has got 800 cases. 800. Every single one that's in the family court system. Every single judge has got 800 cases waiting to be gone through. So what they want is for you to come in, them to come in, come to an agreement and get the hell out of the courtroom. That's what they want. So if you're sitting there telling your story and hoping that the judge is going to take sympathy or pity on you, they're not. What they're going to do is get pissed off that you're, what, get through it lady or man, what are you doing? You know, that's what they, until my watch is like, why are you hitting me? Um, so, <laughs> cause I have one of those Apple anyway. Uh, the point being, they want you to settle and they're going to be angry if you are telling your story and not getting to the point. Seriously, I'm not kidding you. So if you really want to, um, learn about the court system, the no nonsense guide to divorce by Lori Hellis, the no nonsense guide to divorce by Lori Hellis, she breaks it down so you understand what's what why they're doing this how it's how come it's taking so long etc cetera, etc cetera. i had a client recently that was just infuriated with how long the divorce is taking and it's because the other side was you know pulling motion after motion after motion after motion they, they didn't understand the motions you're not going to unless you unless you've taken courses in law and especially family law you're not going to understand it and you don't really need to what you do need to understand is what you need to bring to court. So the scary thing of it is, is a lot of abusers make it so that the target of abuse cannot afford an attorney. So meanwhile, they've got a narcissistic attorney representing the narcissist, right? And then the target of abuse who's trying to get 50-50 custody, at the very least, you know, um, trying to get their fair share of the, you know, dividing everything in half, um, has to represent themselves. And it, it's not fair. It's not, it's not fair because the average person doesn't know how the law stuff goes. Okay. Some do, but most don't. And, um, at the very least, what you want to do is you want to get advice before you go into court from a lawyer. So either Go get, in the state of Arizona, you can go to Fresh Start Women's Resource Center and they have lawyers that you can speak to for like 15 bucks and they can help you fill out the paperwork and they can answer some questions. They can't represent you, but they can, you know, kind of get you prepared for going into court. Um, the court is not the place to tell your story. Your friends are correct. Absolutely. You need to stop. You need to stop. If you need to tell your story, go get a support group. Tell your story there. Okay, the court is not it. And I think a big mistake a lot of um, targets of abuse make is that they have a lot of people pleasing going on. They haven't done the work yet on the codependency. And two things happen. One, the judge is looked at as a substitute parent. And so that's why the story is being told. And they're hoping that the judge is going to take pity on them or understand or, you know, be fair or whatever. Let me be clear here. The laws are not fair. The laws are not fair. Um, judges are often narcissistic themselves and will side with the abuser. That's what I'm saying. This whole family court system needs to be redone from the bottom up. 
Um, the other thing that happens is, is that targets of abuse have not worked on the codependency. And so when the opposing attorney comes at them and is aggressive and angry and, and snapping questions at them and trying to fluster them and everything, the people pleasing kicks in and then they'll say whatever they need to, to make this person go away. You don't want to do that. You absolutely do not want to do that. If you do that, you are going to screw yourself seriously because you will end up giving them the farm just to make them go away. Stop. You can't. That's that's why you don't want to say a whole lot when you're on the stand. When they are asking you questions, they will do sneaky things. Okay. They'll try to rattle you. They'll come at you with anger. They'll come at you with, you know, trying to be your buddy they'll come at you with you know whatever whatever they think is gonna work with you so in a way <laughs> a lot of lawyers are really kind of psychopathic because they read the person on the stand what's gonna work with them what's gonna get them riled up how can I get what I want that's what they do and if you have got codependency going on and you don't have a handle on it that little inner child is going to come roaring to the forefront and you're going to say whatever you think is going to please the attorney. No, you can not. That will screw you. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to need to learn to not say anything more than what will answer the question. And you want to try to get them to give you a yes or a no question with not a lot of story okay if it's a yes or no question there is no story listen to me now believe me later if it is a yes or no question it is one yes and it's a no you know it's like only one question it's a yes or it's a no it's one question you just say yes or no no story no story this is where targets of abuse screw themselves in court you cannot tell your story stop well, the other thing that the attorneys will do is they'll ask a two-part question that is a yes and a no. So one part of the question could be a no, the other part could be a yes. And as soon as you give the one, they'll, you know, oh, well, you know, they'll, so you don't want to do that. So if they're asking a two-part question where one part of the, the answer could be yes, the other part could be no, you're going to bring your water bottle with you onto the stand. And every single time they ask you a question, I want you to take a drink of water. I'm sorry, I don't understand that question. Can you ask Can you ask that in a different way? Do you see where I'm going with that? So if they ask a two-part question, I'm sorry, I don't understand your question. Can you rephrase that? I'm sorry, I don't I don't get what you're saying. Can you can you ask that in a different way? And eventually <laughs> the opposing attorney will catch on to the fact that you're on to them. So they'll narrow it down to a yes or a no, or the judge will finally go, hey, come on. You know, so, um, yeah, and you do that as many times as you need to until they get it down to either a yes question or a no question, not a yes and a no or a no, a yes. Do you see where I'm going with that? No, no two part questions is what I'm trying to say. And it's it'll infuriate the opposing attorney. You don't care. You cannot care. You're not there to please the opposing attorney. But that inner child is going to want to. So that's what you've got to be careful of. And your friends are correct. Stop saying so much on the stand. The more you say, the more the opposing attorney can twist it. Just like your abuser. Let me be clear with that, okay? That's why you don't want to say anything more than you need to. Do not tell your stories. Don't. Support groups are for that. A therapist is for that. Only for a limited amount of time. <laughs> And then you need to move on from your story and heal. But the point being is the court is not the place to do that. So the two books that you're going to want to get, Lori Hellis, No Nonsense, Div D uh, blah, blah, blah. No Nonsense Guide to Divorce by Lori Hellis, Splitting by Bill Eddy and Randy Krieger, because they understand how these narcissistic, psychopathic abusers act when you divorce them. So yeah, okay, let me see, let me make sure. You don't understand the court system. You don't need to. What you do need is to get advice before you go into the court. Make sure the paperwork is filled out correctly. Make sure you have all of your 
evidence that you're going to need, which means all the documentation of the emails and the, the text messages and, you know, things like that to show either a series of harassment or, you know, that they're not answering your questions about your child or whatever. Um, okay. What do you do? Don't say too much. Okay. You don't need to understand it, understand it, but you need to have a basic understanding of how long things take. The system, the law system here in the United States is insanely slow and it's, it grinds slowly, but it grinds finely. So it's frustrating because a lot of survivors of abuse are like, but I want it done. I want it done. I want it done. Well, yes, of course you do. Of course you do. But that's not the way that system goes. And instead of coming in and being snarky with the judge, which you do not want to do, you've got to be patient and you've got to follow the procedures and you've got to talk to an attorney before you go into court if you are having to represent yourself. If you can afford an attorney, make sure you get one that understands narcissistic abuse and how these disordered people think. You want a good attorney that can get them wound up and saying things against themselves as opposed to you getting wound up. Does that make sense? Oh, and remember, attorneys are not warm and fuzzy either. They're not, you know, well, if you know them personally, they are. But if you, when you're working with one, their job is to be a poker player. Their job is to have gray rock. They, if you want to see gray rock in action with a good attorney, whoo, you cannot tell what they are thinking. Nope, there's, there's nothing on their face. And then they drop the bomb. And then you're just like, oh yeah, you got him. Good job. You know what I'm saying? It, I know it's like watching golf, I suppose. But anyway, it's, <laughs> it's, it goes very slowly. But when, boy, when they do it, it's like, oh, that was beautiful. Anyway, um, so, yeah. So you want to calm yourself before you go in. Have somebody go with you that can be an emotional support. Have that person remind you to not overshare, not overshare, don't overshare, don't do it. Remember, if they ask a two-part question, get it down to a one question. Either a yes or a no. Not one part could be yes, one part could be no. Uh-uh. I'm sorry. I don't understand. Can you rephrase that? Oh, yes. No story. No story. Okay. All right. Well, I hope that helps, and I hope, I hope court goes well for you. So read those books. They will help. Okay. Um... My abuser would say they acted bad because of their abuse. WTF. Okay. <laughs> so abusers do that. Abusers will go on to these sites like mine or uh, Kim Saeed or Shahida Arabi or, you know, any of them. And mine for information. And then they will try to play the victim. Don't get me started. Oh, my God. So, I don't know about you, but having worked with literally hundreds of survivors of abuse, none of them would act the way an abuser does. And some of them have been horrifically abused, and yet they are the kindest, nicest, uh, most filled with integrity, most charitable people I have seen. It is an honor to work with this population. It really is. The ones who go on to abuse are narcissists, okay? They are disordered. Disordered people are the ones that abuse. Healthy people do not abuse, okay? Healthy people will make mistakes every once in a while, but they will fix it. And they will make amends and they will try to be better and make sure that never happens again. Narcissists will say all those pretty things, but they don't change. And they do the same thing over and over and over again. And yeah, they will say, oh, well, you know, I had a rough childhood and, and that's why I rage at you at two o'clock in the morning. What? Are you, what? No. Uh-uh. That's, that's a load. I'm, I'm calling bull manure. Sorry. No. No, that's, that's, uh, uh that's their line. So they do, they go onto these websites and they learn the lingo and they try to be a psychologist or a counselor themselves. 
and they uh, claim that they are, you know, they, oh, they've got PTSD. Oh, this sounds like something that was in the news recently, doesn't it? They claim that they have PTSD and that they are uh, acting out because they have PTSD. Okay, I know, plenty, plenty of people that have CPTSD, PTSD, veterans, etc., and they don't behave like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not the PTSD because I don't think they have PTSD. So yeah, so they will claim that they've got PTSD. They will claim that they've got, um, you know, a bad childhood, you know, daddy never bought me a pony. Oh, please get over it. Um, you know, mommy never paid enough attention to me or whatever their BS is. And for they're doing that to, to get the sympathy going so that you feel bad for them. But then they're also doing it so that they can go, oh, well, it's I'm doing this because of the abuse. I, I'm keeping you up at two o'clock in the morning screaming at you because of the abuse. Oh, I'm beating you because of the abuse I went through. Oh, I'm uh, isolating you from family and friends because of the abuse I went through. <coughs> you know, I love you so much. I'm jealous because I love you. and And I'm jealous because of the abuse I went through when I was a kid or the abuse I went through with an ex or whatever. Red flag on the play. Seriously, this this should be, if they're telling you that they're being abusive because of their past abuse, and they're being abusive because they're abusers, period. Period, because healthy people go get help. Narcissists do not. They'll say they'll go get help. They'll, they'll go one to three times and then they stop because they can't, they can't hang with it. They can't take responsibility for what is their stuff. Okay. So yeah, if they're blaming their bad behavior on their past, uh-uh. Nope, not buying it. If they've got a past that's causing bad behavior, why aren't they in therapy? Why aren't they working on it? Where are the books that they're working on? See where I'm going with that? Healthy people do not abuse people. Okay. And most targets of abuse do not turn into abusers themselves because they don't want to visit that on anybody ever again. They know what it's like. You know what I'm saying? So, so there is that. All right, my loves. Well, that's about all the time I have for today. So, um, remember no show this Sunday and on Saturday, I will see you guys in Honolulu. So if you're interested in getting tickets, please go to chrisgodinas.com. Um, and the next uh, meet and greet after that is going to be in Atlanta uh, in November. So if you want to get tickets for that, go to chrisgodinas.com. Go to, I think it's events, and it should be under there. Um, and don't forget, Susanna Quintana is awesome. Please visit her website, susannaquintana.com. She's got her book, um, You're Still That Girl. She's working on another book. I'm so excited. I can't wait until it comes out. So um, anyway, there is that. So uh, I will see you guys on Saturday in Honolulu. And you guys have a great week. And remember, no show on Sunday. And the next show will be on the 8th. And it's going to be Managing Your Time. So the last time I talked about uh, procrastination and people were like, uh, how do I manage my time? How do you manage your time? So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about how I manage my day and, you know, what you, to, you too can do. So there that is. All right, you guys have a great week and I will see you guys in Honolulu and I'll talk to you later. Bye.